Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to this Expedition Match stream. I'm Shadow333, and this is going to be starting off with a match between Cybernetic Pony and Catalyte on Tomb of Heroes, which, if any of you who are watching have ever watched this before, you most likely have seen this map, so I'm not going to go over too much. Anyway, we have Cybernetic Pony playing CISO on the west side of the map. Catalyte, is he going for... What is he going for? I don't know. Probably something. Presumably he's going to go for something, not just going to stay with Species Selector the entire game. That is not a winning strategy. Vekir! Okay, he's going for Vekir. Yeah, it's generally not a good idea to just stick with the Species Selector. They don't do anything. At all. Except choose a Species. But I think Catalyte has figured that out by now. So yeah, he is going for Vekir. Separating Pony, what is he starting out with? He has, well... Resource processors, nothing too major. A couple scouting units going out, nothing out of the ordinary. So, Cybernetic Pony is going for a pretty bog standard start. He's going actually, I don't know, he's going for a little bit earlier Q-Plasma than I would expect. Though, I'm not really sure this is that early. Given the Liquid Crystal Mining fix, four LCRPs is not that low. Used to be you have to have six to be standard, but it's... I think now 4 is probably a decent start, but it looks like 790 Pony is probably going to be focusing a bit more on early tech than he normally does. While Catalyte, on the other hand, he is getting more Liquid Crystal. He's fo focusing much more on getting his basic infrastructure built up first before focusing on getting his tech going. However, he does also have a scouting units going out. A Death Veer, Shin Veer pair going out. And they will die horribly. Or at least, they may die horribly. Catalyte might want to abort that, but... For the moment, at least at this iteration, they have died horribly. Now, Catalyte does... Okay. Does send off in a different direction. That's a good. That's a really good idea, actually, because Cybernetic Pony could be doing proxies at some point on various iterations, and this is the place that proxies happen. Along the north side of the map, that's what you have to check for on this map. So Catalyte is the right idea, however, Cybernetic Pony able to get in the base regardless, and Catalyte does not have a whole lot of defenses for this. He... Well, that attack happens at the 3 minute mark. Normally you get your depot around the 3.30 mark. So Cybernetic Pony is attacking fairly early, and that's... With a Zion Veer, something that can be dealt with, but it is a little bit tricky. A Zion Veer and an extra foundation would do it. Catalyte does have the resources at this point. However, Lancer coming in in case for an early Zion Pulsar, but Catalyte will be able to see this. He is, however, two minutes down from that. He's not fully aware of that. From He's not aware of that at all. He's barely looked at it from what we can see. Flashing red, he has not seen most of that attack. He probably doesn't know about the Lancer. He's... Well, he's getting his QP up. He's definitely getting vehicles fairly soon. He only has about 30 seconds. He needs to build that foundation now. Like, don't worry about the other RP and QP. Just build a foundation. Just go. Do it. I don't think there's enough time. Yes, Okay, now he's built a foundation, but even then... I... I don't... He doesn't have enough time. The RP... The... Shinveer, sorry. The special op is here. Special op and Marine are here. The Shinveer and Tethyr are actually. Are they dead? I think they just died. Looks like they died over the north. Okay, well, that's. Oh no, it looks like they never got sent out. What? Okay, Cadillac jumping back to the 105 mark. This is when they got sent out. And it looks like he forgot to undo their orders. That's the problem. He needs to. He's looking at it now. He's not a new the orders. By the way, this is a replay, so in case you're wondering, he's not checking the stream or anything. But yeah, he is actually retreating back to base with those units. He is not going to be going out to scout. He's seen all he needs to see. He knows he needs to stay at home just to have a bit more support. And the two foundations coming up will help out a lot, but... Catalyte apparently getting some coaching from Monkuki. I'm not sure why he's telling him to ignore the attack, because this is not an echo attack from the looks of it. We'll see. I mean, obviously, there's still four minutes of playable of playable time that it could be echoed out in. But Cybernetic Pony does seem fairly committed to this attack. Although at the same time, Catalyte is getting his depot up. The depot will go down fairly soon, though. Yes, there it goes. That depot is down, and Catalyte's going to need to, well, do something better. Although this time, wave, there might be a small change. It looks like the change is not going to be in Catalyte's favor, however. Foundation is being built. Shinmir and Tethyr are going down quickly, and... That will not work out. He is moving them back making sure, in this iteration, making sure that they are not going to be attacked. Well, not attacked as easily, not as out in the open. But it's still kind of a bad 
position. And yeah, Mako keeping pointing out in the chat from the original game that the attack is clearly not just being echoed out. I mean, Cyber Pony jumping back to the 224 mark, and he is committed. I mean, the attack back in the unplayable past edge, that attack is going. Cyber Pony is not pulling back at this point. He is going for this attack, and now a foundation is set up. Cadillac can defend against this, and he is losing a Teth Veer in the process. But he does defend successfully, apart from the loss of the Teth Veer, which is going to be rather important once this Lancer comes in. Because that Lancer here, that's going to be... Well, it's going to be rather annoying to have to deal with without particularly good anti-air. Lancers, plural, my mistake. Another Lancer being built, and probably a third... Well, ATHCs are being built afterwards with Cybernetic Pony. Aerial Control Center is coming up, and probably will have a Teth Pulsar fairly soon for Catalyte. But even then... One of the Lancers is up, and it is, unfortunately for it, not able to deal with ground that effectively. The Zion Veer is able to deal with it. I'm a bit surprised there's... Okay, there is a Teth Pulsar. This there's no Teth Searcher at the moment, given the Aerial Control Center investment. Maybe a little soon for that, but... Hey, he's able to get rid of the Lancer, no problem. However, ATHCs coming in afterwards will be a problem, and there are no Zion Pulsars to deal with this. Another Teth Pulsar being built, which is exactly what Cybernetic Pony wants. However, this is two minutes up from the unplayable past edge, so there's plenty of time for Catalyte to change this up a bit to defend against the ATHC. And even then, he actually is doing fine. The Teth Pulsars are doing well enough. They... Well, 34 damage every five seconds to ground compared to 43. So they're about on par with the ATHCs, actually, for damage. 160 health to 180 health, so not quite the same for health, but for damage, yeah, they're pretty much equal. And it looks like... Same time, Cybernetic Pony trying to get rid of this comm hub to hide the expansion to the north, though admittedly this really brings a lot of attention to it, I think. But hey, at least he won't have his mo his movement spotted in the northwest side of the map. Still though, like, just, just go past it. I don't think Cadillac is likely to notice. Especially if you just go and stay there. Anyway. Unfortunately for Cadillac, he is losing both of his test pulsers, and Cybernetic Pony jumping back to the 413 mark. Retreating with the Lancers, making sure that they do not die ultimately. And probably going to attack with them as a harassment force later on in the game. Does have his Marine and Special Ops retreated as well, so he's made sure not to lose any of his units so far. You can see in the timeline, no deaths. All these blinking gray bars, they're going to go away fairly soon. So Cybernetic Pony in a pretty good position right now. Harassing around again, the Teth Pulsers are now being put out of position. So this particular RP is probably going to go down. Catalyte does not have anything defending it, and he doesn't have a lot of Q-Plasma to begin with. Trying to get rid of ATHCs with the wrong unit types, though Catalyte, jumping back to the 5 minute mark when these Lancer attacks starts. Is he going to move the Teth Pulsar up? I don't think so. Or north, rather. But he's going to move one. That should be enough. That will get rid of the Lancers, no problem. Although, two Lancers at once is a bit of a pain to deal with. But yeah, that Teth Pulsar might... The Pulsar might go down, but the Veer class unit is going to be fine inside. And, yeah, there we go. Teth Veer... But that will have no problem dealing with the Lancer. However, he is going to go... Going to go to repair and lure that Lancer to its death. So Cybernetic Pony, I don't think he can deal with this. Jumping back to the 520 mark. No, he does not have enough orders to do so. So that Lancer is dead. Completely dead. And at the same time, we do have... Well, he's still attacking that comm hub. Making it go away. And now, shifting into Zion Pulsers, which... Is not a bad shift, although Catalyte, jumping to his point of view, the 612 mark, the Lancer is dead. His QPRPs are definitely safe. Switching over to the Zion Pulsers, that is going to be fine. However, Cybernetic Pony is getting tanks and tornadoes, so he is one step ahead this entire time. He's gotten machinery. He's about half a minute ahead here, and he's getting another Lancer, getting machinery. He's getting Marines into the tank, which is something I've only really seen him do, honestly. It's something that's been in the game ever since release, but... Very few people put infantry into tanks. It's extremely handy to do, especially when you're dealing with teleportation and chronoportation. Just put them tank, the marines in there, drop back with the tanks, and then go. But he's not doing that. Oh, and Cybernetic Pony mentioning that there's a psychological effect of killing this northwest, ex the northwest comm hub by communicating. It may have an expansion here, without necessarily taking the expansion. Though Pony has taken the expansion, it gives the effect that, oh, they must have taken the expansion because the comp hub's destroyed. At this point, though, he actually has, but... That's an interesting assessment, actually. But it looks like this tank is getting intercepted by the Zion Pulsars, and when tanks get under tank, they do release the Marines. Bit of an interface convenience, but at this point, it may actually backfire. And Catalyte attacking very hard here. 
a minute mark from Cybernetic Pony's point of view. We do have these nine pulsers coming in. The Tornad will defend effectively, but he should be able to get rid of a lot of these resource processors in the meantime. The Tornad is moving to defend, and these nine pulsers are. They are moving to their deaths. Now, jumping back to Catalyze's point of view, he's. Gonna be able to get rid of the tank first, but one of the Zion Pulsers does go around to where the Tornado is gonna be set up for defense. However, it looks like he is basically setting up so that it doesn't matter what way the Tornado goes. Either way, the Zion Pulsers are gonna be in a good position. And the Tornado finally moving forward. It's gonna kill one of the Zion Pulsers, but the other Zion Pulsers is able to get through to the RPs and more Zion Pulsers streaming in. Cadillac is building more and more Zion Pulsers, switching over to Shin Turcher to deal with, well, I guess, Tornads. I mean, Teth Searchers would be a thing to do there, but maybe he's expecting cloaked units? I don't know. The only cloaked unit that CISO has is the Blackbird and the Comm Center, but Cybernetic Pony isn't actually using that right now. Now, at this point, Cybernetic Pony is a minute down from here, and he is able to get rid of these Zion Veers, sorry, Zion Pulsers first, and then Zion Veers, no problem, with a couple Tornads. So ultimately, he did not lose these resource processors. The final iteration is... Catalyte loses three Zion Pulsers at pretty much no loss to Cybernetic Pony. More Zion Pulsers streaming in, and Teth Thurgers... Okay, there we go. There's the response. Teth Thurgers and Teth Pulsers. However, even with that, it's not going to help out too much. These... Well, these are the original Zion Pulsers. And the rest of Catalyte's army moves back. Catalyte does not want to sacrifice his army for nothing, because that's just something you don't want to do. Especially not with Vekir. But in general, no. You do not want to do that. And Shindurders are up, getting rid of the ATHCs without issue. Lancers coming in from the north as well, so Cybernetic Pony just attacking on all fronts. But Catalyte should be well prepared enough to deal with this. Joining his point of view, he, at the 9 minute mark, actually does not see that. Oh dear, he does not see this at all. He is not paying any attention to this attack. He is actually getting pretty heavily damaged too. But he has not noticed the attack. He's jumping back, and now he's jumped back to the Impelable Fast Edge. He will be able to get rid of these Lancers. He just needs to move the hierarchy forward. I don't know why he's checking that attack, but he does... He barely has enough orders to deal with these Lancers before he loses an RP. It's close, though. Able to go to the ATHCs, but he has to send an order... He can't even do it easily. Very near the Impelable Past Edge, and unfortunately his units already were ordered to move out. And he's not able to get rid of the Lancers soon enough. They get rid of most of the QP RPs, and that is just... Not gonna work out very well. So basically... Cybernetic Pony has completely torn apart Catalyte's QP economy. And also gone for Gatek himself. I was about to point out that Catalyte would be able to get Gatek. Or wouldn't be able to get Gatek at this point, so it wouldn't matter too much. But Cybernetic Pony has gotten Gatek. I was getting a macro fab just for good measure. Probably getting a Martanx and such. And he has quite a few units for it as well, so he's definitely well prepared. As soon as he gets Teleporter, Corona Porter pair up, he's going to be solid. And he has a nice little proxy base to the southeast as well. I'm guessing Teleporter, Corona Porter pair is going to come from here rather than from the main base. Now, Catalyte, about a minute down from here, finally able to get rid of that Lancer, but still lost three RPs in the process. Could rebuild it, but he's on one base and hasn't got a whole lot going for him otherwise. He hasn't expanded to the Northeast. He has gotten... Well, I'm not sure if he's gotten rid of this, but the Northeast Comm Hub has been destroyed, so we can get to the North Expansion without issue. The Southwest... The South Expansion here, he can't easily take. He doesn't know that the Pony is here, mind you, but he can't easily take. And Cybernetic Pony does, in fact, build... Teleporter, Chrono Porter pair here, and he probably builds one in the main base as well, because he has a tendency, or originally had a tendency to build two sets of Chrono Porter Teleporter. Thing. One in each base. If he had two bases, he'd build a Chrono Porter and Teleporter in each base. But it looks like he's only doing it in his proxy. He's not doing it in his main base, just the proxy. And it's up, it's ready. He's not going for it quite yet, but he will very likely soon. Now, Cadillac, on the other hand, going back to the... 1228 mark when he is going for an all-out attack on Cybernetic Pony's base. A Blackbird is actually being built, so I guess cloak detection is relevant. Blackbird being built, and a lot of Lancers go down first. The Tornado's not taking a whole lot of damage, though. However, no, never mind. One of them does go down. The Lancers were taking the brunt of that, but now all of Cybernetic Pony's army is going down. Now, Cybernetic Pony, by the way, does have that secondary expansion, but this initial attack going extremely well for Catalyte. Catalyte is basically winning this out. Now, Cybernetic Pony. 12 minute mark, he does now know what's going on. Sending his units forward, getting a Lancer in just to distract, slow down a bit. Okay, not slow down at all. Didn't do anything. But he does have the Chronoport, he does have the Teleporter, not making use of it quite yet. We don't see any Chronoports on the timeline yet. But intercepting the attack right at the choke point, that probably won't make a difference. In fact, 
He does, the, this turret here is probably the best thing he has going for him in terms of defense. That one turret is probably going to stop everything from the north. Everything from the east, not so much. And Catalyte actually looks like he's changing his orders right now, avoiding that north side, avoiding the turret. The east side has no turret coming in, and teleported infantry are here. Cybernetic Pony has teleported everything in here from the southeast base. But even with that, it's not going to make a big difference. Surprisingly enough, though, because infantry actually are very powerful. The infantry weakness is range and health. And this is a replay. Just to point out, I generally do replay casts. I don't often do live games. And Akron's actually... It's not well set up for live games because this timeline thing does not actually update. You can't jump between player views live, and the timeline doesn't update for observers. This is observer view. Or, we're looking at actual observer. But yeah, observers can't really get timeline updates, unfortunately. So replays are really the best way of doing it for Akron, but that's beside the point. The point is, imagery are actually starting to prove their salt right, or trying to earn their salt, prove their worth, whatever. Imagery are proving their worth here, getting rid of about half the army that Catalyte had sent in here. Regardless, Catalyte able to get through all these tornadoes, not really able to break the base though. With the units he has here, he's not going to be able to get any further than, than as far as he's gotten now. And that was kind of a last ditch effort on his part too. He does have some reinforcements in his main base. He has no gay tech. He's running out of resources, still on one base, and no expansions whatsoever. I'm really surprised at this. I don't know why Catalyte has not, while he's attacking, just expanded to the north. That would be the thing to do. But he has indeed not done so, trying to just stop Cybernetic Pony's expansions. But it's way too late. Cybernetic Pony has gay tech. Cybernetic Pony has a proxy right here. It's, it's pretty much over. I mean, Catalyte is running low on resources. He has... One LC crate left, and that's got 30 pulls. No, 26 now. So that has basically about 200 resources left. 200 liquid crystal left in his main base. So that's two vehicles. Maybe three. Like, that's nothing. That's absolutely nothing. However, Catalyte's still going for gate tech. He does have the Q Plasma to support it, but he does not have the liquid crystal to go for any additional units at this point. Or basically doesn't. He's... Like I said, got about 800, sorry, 80, sorry, 160 left. I'm not able to math today for some reason. He has 160 or so left, and that's it. And he needs to use that to either, well, either he needs to build more RPs or just teleport these RPs north because he is out of Liquid Crystal. That point cannot be emphasized enough. He's out of Liquid Crystal, has a slipgate, gonna try to teleport these guys in, but at this point, Cybernetic Pony has three bases, a ton of importers over the northwest side. Yeah, expansion to the north, expansion to the... S well, south. Okay, maybe just two bases. But still, Cybernetic Pony is a healthy economy, and Catalyte is very nearly dead in the water. Catalyte has basically one decisive strike to maybe do this. Cybernetic Pony right now does not have the biggest army. He is starting to build up a bit, but he doesn't have a lot of production structures. On the other hand, Catalyte has... Well... He has the RPs teleporting, but that's not really going to do him any good. Needs to teleport here or teleport maybe here. I mean, he's got a lot of places he can teleport to. Not really taking advantage of that, though, and it looks like he is... Okay, teleporting to the North Island expansion. Very safe place to teleport to. Fortunately, the RPs did lose a lot of their personal skip energy. That was weird. I'm kind of surprised that it didn't just teleport naturally. It normally it does. Anyway, Catalyte does need to send up a lot of his units over to this northwest base. Okay, it looks like he's going to try to fix that. Which is weird. Anyway, so Catalyte does have another healthy economy base going. There's another base going that will work, sort of. Oh, okay, apparently. I guess I guess the Slipgate must only teleport one at a time, and then it gets confused if it has to teleport more than one at a time. That just, that's bizarre. Regardless, Catalyte is still in an unhealthy position. Cybernetic Pony is floating a ton of resources, his main weakest now is the lack of production structures. Two or three more factories, two or three more macro fabs. That would do it. And he does have factories across the... Well, two factories across the map. He is producing constantly in his main base, but he's not producing out of everything, and he could be producing more. Still, he has so much money. He has a lot of... Very healthy economy right now. Catalyte's just now gotten himself back online for economy. And Cybernetic Pony expanding to Catalyte's north base. Okay, Cybernetic Pony has everything on the map. Catalyte... Not even going for a last-ditch effort yet. I'd kind of expect a last-ditch uppercut. I mean, he knows that he has this area in the timeline that's basically the only place he can attack. It's to follow up what he already attacked on. But he's not going for it. He...
could. He could actually chronoport all these units back and then teleport them in and, well, okay, further back in time, but still, you have to go back a minute, like about here. Can't quite chronoport everything here, but still, that's his best bet, is try to follow up the attack he attacked with about four minutes ago with these units. Chronoport them back, follow up your attack. That would probably do it. That would probably kill Cybernetic Pony, but at this point, Cybernetic Pony has way too much, and that's even then, that's a maybe. Because Cybernetic Pony does have a Chrono Porter, and he has had that for a long time. To point out as well, Cybernetic Pony does have enough resources to Chrono Porter back everything here. Probably has since the time when Catalyte is at. Actually, yes, he does. 640 Q Plasma, so this is definitely possible. That was about 500 for all these infantry. Cybernetic Pony is in a very healthy position. Just a matter of attacking, and he is basically just going to teleport everything in. Possibly uppercut and then teleport, but yeah. Cybernetic Pony just has to move and he wins. And Catalyte is... Well, Catalyte's going for it. Sending in a couple Death Turks as he's... No, not even going for it. He's not even teleporting. He's just walking his units in. Able to find some of Cybernetic Pony's expansions in the meantime, but unfortunately splitting up all of his army, losing half of his army in the main base, the other half able to get rid of an expansion in the north, well, to the center. But that's not going to do much. Cybernetic Pony has so much in reserve that he doesn't have to worry about this. I mean, he can lose this base. He can lose all of his bases and he still have enough units in play to win outright. Just in terms of the unit composition, there's not a whole lot of anti-air that Cybernetic Pony has to deal with. And Catalyte can't build anything more. Well, okay, a couple things more. He does have, does have all these RPs here, but still. And a Chronoport has occurred for Cybernetic Pony. He has chronoported a couple tornadoes, not too much, but still enough to help defend in case of a follow. Okay, the follow-up attack is—it's too late for that now. That's since that's long since fallen off the timeline. Though Catalyte doesn't have a whole lot of options. He does have the base to the north, but one base play does not work especially well in Akron, I'm afraid. However, he is doing a bit of a clever move here. He is building RPs to teleport later on. However, infantry being teleported in. They are just swarming everything. Fortunately for them, they were a bit scattered in the process of the teleportation, but still, they're still able to swarm. And that swarming is... Oh, one of them got stuck behind this forest here, so... Well, decorative trees more than anything. So yeah, one of them got stuck in the little decorative gardens, but and the leader at that. Still, that is going to be a pain in the butt to deal with. So yeah, I kind of like... A bit clever here. I kind of like this. He is building up RPs to teleport them away. To other parts of the map, presumably this northern section where the resources are plentiful. I like that. That's a good thing to do, especially since he doesn't really have map control. He can't reliably build the RPs in other places, but it looks like that's not even going to matter. These Marines actually taking a lot of damage. Taking a lot of damage from auto defense foundations and going down from there, but even with that, this should probably be enough. Although, wow, auto defense really. Is that auto defense? No, it's just, it wasn't auto defense at all. That was just the timeline screwing with things. What the? Okay, Cybernetic Pony is just jumping around a lot. That's all that's happening. Anyway, from Catalyze's point of view, it's becoming rather difficult to deal with. Surprisingly, he's not skipping these units back into his base. He has skipped teleport. He could do that. He can very easily get around the map by teleportation. That's kind of what Vekir does, but oddly not cho choosing not to do so. And at this point, decent amount of liquid crystal, not a whole lot of Q plasma, could build quite a bit more though. He could actually be building more vehicles. So, in a healthier position, Catalyte has a bit of a chance. But only, but he has to be really careful about this, though, and it looks like, even with that, Saturnian Pony is just so full of units, he can easily just win. I'm surprised he hasn't just sent everything in. Getting in heavy cruisers as well. Is he going for weaponry? No, he's not. He's going for ground units, but not for weaponry. Not going to go for the nuke. That would be kind of rude if he did, but he is going for the tanked Chrono Port, sending all his Marines into tanks, Chrono Porting them, teleporting them, and then having them jump out and kill everything. Oh no, just teleport. Not even going for the chronoport, just going for pure teleport. And in they go. Good way of saving chrono energy, which is why he does it. Oh, slipgate repel, that's what he's pointing out. Yes, right, of course, there's slipgate here. I for completely forgot that, that mechanic. So yeah, a bunch of the Marines getting repelled, something getting repelled onto this back part of the map here that that is actually inaccessible. Because I wanted to make sure that nothing could path back here, and I didn't really bank on Slipgate Repel. So yeah, this Marine's kind of stuck here for a little while. Unfortunately, he can't go off the map borders. I guess when the game is done, he'll just walk around the side here, around this tree. 
But nope, he has to stay inside the map region. Otherwise, bad things happen, I guess. He gets court-martialed. He stepped one meter out of line. Got out of the battlefield. It's tried for cowardice. I don't know. Yeah, same with these guys. Okay, these guys are in a bit more of a reasonable position. Though even then, they probably could just climb up. Or weave through the rocks. But they won't right now. They are sticking very duly to military protocol. And not to common sense. Which would be rather suitable right now. However, it doesn't matter. Sound Rain Point is still going to win this. He's going in, tearing apart the base, and Catalyte just watching this attack as it happens. Sound Rain Point about two minutes out from here, attacking again at 25 minute mark, while Catalyte's watching what happens at the 22 minute mark. Sound Rain Point attacking across the timeline, just to be sure, which is a good idea given the slipgate here, just to be sure that he can actually kill everything. That Sound Rain Point doesn't have to worry about Catalyte chronoporting back savior units, attacking Basically the three minute interval. That's that's a great idea to do. Attack at a time and attack three minutes later so that basically it's hard for the chronoports to happen because of the chronoports three minute delay. There's, chronoports have a three minute range and if you attack from both when you're wanting to attack early time and attacking further in the future when they might send units back from, it works perfectly. So that was... I'm not really sure that Slipkit Repel is overpowered. I would say it definitely drags on matches a bit. Whether or not it's overpowered really comes down to whether or not it's actually winning games. And I wouldn't say this is winning games, being that Catalyte has lost everything. It took 26 minutes, which probably could have taken more like 15, but still. Catalyte... I don't think Slipgate Repel is OP. I think it is annoying. But not so much overpowered. Just a pain. Yeah, that is game and... Oh yeah, Catalyte is a bit of a bit annoying when it comes to the end of the game. So, given that it's the end of the game, Catalyte has a tendency to sort of wait around until it ends. So, I'll just end it now, because forget it. Catalyte, you better hit surrender in the future. Anyway, I'm going to be back with another game in just a few minutes, so stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed that. I, that's what I say first.